Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Have you ever had a clip in the source monitor not change or change when you didn't want it to change? Well, we're going to have a look at why clips change in the source monitor. Okay, let's start by showing you what I've got here and then I'll tell you the edit that I need to do. So I'll play this back. This is some Adobe stock and some wonderful art list music. And uh, I set up something called coming home here. So he's rushing home and his dad is coming home to the wonderful, boy, he lives in a nice area with these waterfalls. Anyway, so coming up, I have one shot of horses. And let's say that I was asked to add another shot of the horses later on in the same clip. So here's the first clip. They come up, horses, they're looking on, and right at the end of this, the music rises up and boom. We want the same clip, but later on, of the horses at this point. Okay, so I'll move back to this point where my horses originate. And if you double click in the timeline, you'll open it up in the source monitor and you'll see the in and out point for that clip right there. Oh, okay. So I want to reuse this clip down in this point here. So I'll drag the clip down in here and I want to change where this clip is. So I'm trying to move this and I can't. Well, let me see if I can move the beginning part and you can see it's changed down here. And your first thought might be that Premiere Pro is doing the wrong thing it's absolutely doing the right thing. When you double click on a clip in the timeline, it loads that clip and the in and out point for that clip in, from the timeline into the source monitor. So you're looking at this duration here and that duration here are exactly the same. So let's zoom in a little bit in here. Okay. So double clicking on this clip and dragging it in here is not a good idea. I mean, I can freely move this, but I think the problem is that some people will grab this point here, this out point and try to keep going when you're actually bashing against the edge here. If this clip was on its own track on the above and you drag this out, now you're dragging that clip further. That's not what we want, but I hope that helps you understand what you're hitting when you're trying to move that. There's a much better way, and I'll show you what that is. So let's undo a couple times and put that back in. So instead of that clip being dragged there, I'll delete that clip and I'll use match frame. And if you click on the clip, and tap the F key for frame in the North American keyboard, F for match frame, it looks the same. So watch this, I'll double click on this and I'll hit F, double click F, double click F. There's no way to see the difference in the source monitor. What match frame is doing is, and what's different is it's loading it back from the project not from the timeline, and it's matching the frame you're at. So I've got a whole tutorial uh, uh, on match frame. So what we want to do is tap the F key, and now we've got an independent new clip so I can change this source point completely. So what I wanna do is find, I'm gonna move the playhead to a point where the, the horse changes direction and I don't want that person in the background. So that's what I want there. I'll tap the I key for a new in point. And now when I drag this into here and we play this, so there's the first horses they're looking on. The music is gonna swell and boom, our horse is in. So match frame allowed me to grab the clip independently. And I think that that's a, a much more powerful way to work. Let me show you the way that some people who don't, don't use the source monitor would probably work. They'll find that clip, by the way, they'll, they'll look for the clip this way and 
you could actually just right click and show that reveal in project. So you don't even have to go looking for it. And then they'll drag it over here and then they'll open that up and then they'll look at that and they'll drag this around and then they'll, they'll go through all of this down here on the timeline, then stick it in the right spot. It's so much easier, as I mentioned, match frame. And, and by the way, I could set that in point now, match frame I, and drag that in. Now, one last thing I wanna show you about match frame. Um, let's, let's show you this. So if I'm tapping the F key on each one of these, they're loading in without me selecting it. If you have two clips and I hit match frame, it's going to go to, now this, this is the one, that's the waterfall on top. But if I have nothing selected and I hit F, it's going to go to the bottom one. But if I click on the top one and tap F, then I can match frame. So that's an easy way for you to target what clip you're using for match frame. So this ended up being a lot about match frame, but it really is about the source monitor and why sometimes when you're changing something in the source monitor, it's changing in the timeline or it's not. Like I showed you, you can't ram that edge of the clip past the edge of the clip in the timeline because the trim is at the end and you're butting up against another clip. Very powerful tools that, I mean, if you're a seasoned editor, you're looking at this and you're probably thinking, really, people don't know this? No, they don't. There's a lot of drag and drop editors that have not experienced the source monitor. So a lot of precision and control in using that. You don't have to use it, but if you are and you're struggling, hopefully this will let you know why some things will work and some things will not. All right, if you're new to Video Revealed and you have found something like this uh, informative, please take a moment and subscribe. It makes a big difference to us here on Video Reveal. If you want to support us some more and make a really big difference, you can do that through PayPal. We have amazing PayPal supporters that have supported us now for years. They're awesome. I'm starting to make cool stuff available to our PayPal supporters. So if you want that, like the 50 split screens, then support us on PayPal. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to shake your editing world up and show you the things that, that you have in Premiere Pro that you should be using.